Recognizing the leader of the third party. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My colleague reserved his right uh, to continue in the debate. However, he is occupied elsewhere at the moment, so I will rise to speak to Bill 26, the Name Amendment Act. So this legislation is aiming to close a loophole that is claimed to have allowed a violent criminal to change his name. And I think we can all agree that public safety is paramount to a well-functioning society. And we fully support the measures to protect the public from violent offenders who are deemed to be a risk to public safety. And we support the addition of a criminal record check when name changes are requested to allow for the Registrar General to determine if a person's requested name change poses a risk to the public. However, we have some concerns about the legislation. The main one being the ambiguity of a, quote, prescribed offense. In public statements, the Minister of Health has listed, has listed three offenses that would be included in this legislation, and they include murder, sexual assault, sexual assault and sexual assault against children. Bill 26 includes two specific designations that would prevent people from changing their names. These are long-term dangerous, dangerous long-term offenders and long-term offenders as defined in the Criminal Code of Canada. These additions make sense to us. However, the inclusion of prescribed offense in Clause 2 lays the ground for potential unintended consequences. I'm going to pick up on the comments that were made by the uh, House Leader for the Official Opposition uh, in that how, how we proceed with debate in here matters. How legislation is brought forward, is introduced, and is debated matters. This legislation was introduced yesterday, uh, three days before the end of a parliamentary session. Uh, three days before the end of a parliament. Uh, and it includes, of course, this uh, not specified in the legislation which offenses will be included, as the minister's public statements seem to indicate, but the ability for the lieutenant governor and council to determine what offenses will be included in this legislation and determine that by regulation. And we've had this conversation many, many, many times in this chamber in the last four years um, about the tendency for governments to bring in legislation that leaves an enormous amount of the defining over to regulation that is done behind closed doors by order of council. And uh, the, this approach to legislation means that what the public doesn't have is clarity and certainty about what specific offenses will be included in this legislation. If the public were to go by the minister's public statements, they would think it's really clear. This legislation covers murder, sexual assault, and sexual assault against children. But my, my concern is that those definitions have not been included in the legislation. They're left to later, after we're done here with this debate, after we're done reviewing this legislation, which is our job, and it's left to, once again, the Lieutenant Governor and Council, the Cabinet, to determine, not in public, not in view of the public, not in, in debate, not in the written legislation, but later, and uh, it gives that power in perpetuity to the government to add to their list of prescribed offenses. And so while the public might think that um, they're in total agreement with this legislation because it makes sense and it's public safety and we want people to be, um, you know, who have committed these serious offenses for the public to know who they are, I really question uh, why um, this government has chosen to include prescribed offense that will be determined later in regulation. Um, and it's unfortunately just uh, a trend that we've seen again and again from this government 
uh, an accelerating trend um, and one that really undermines the, the transparency and trust building that really has to go into all work of democracy. Um, we have a, a trust issue in a lot of democracies. We have a trust issue in, in this country and in this province. And it's a time for every government to lean into the greatest level of transparency that they can. And so I, I will uh, be raising this at committee stage um, and just make it clear while we support the intent uh, and the purpose of the spill, we do have real concerns with the, what's being left uh, to be done after the debate is finished. Thank you. Mm -hmm.